you have this, uh, this inkling that really yearns to give back, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much for instilling that um, just passion and love in our hearts, Lord. Um, Lord I pray that right now you'll just be with the, the families, um, the people who are affected by this um, outbreak, Lord. Lord uh, and, but most importantly, I pray that you would just give us this confidence that you are still in, in control over every, everything, although it might seem, not seem like it in reality, Lord Jesus. So help us to just hold, yeah, just hold on to you, Lord Jesus, throughout these times. And with that, um, we love you and we give our worship to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. We will start off. You don't need to rise in this case, I guess, but please do sing. All you guys are all kind of muted. Sing along with me. That, the first song is called Oh Happy Day. <clears throat> This day in history, death is beaten, you have rescued me, sing it out, Jesus is alive. Empty cross, empty grave, life eternal, you have won the day, shout it out, Jesus is alive. He's alive. Oh, happy day, happy day. You wash my sin away. Oh, happy day, happy day. And I'll never be the same. Ever I am changed When I stand in that place Free at last meeting face to face I am yours, Jesus, you are mine Endless joy Perfect peace, earthly pain finally will see. Celebrate, Jesus is alive. He's alive. Oh, happy day, happy day. You wash my sin away. Oh, happy day. Happy day, I'll never be the same. Forever I am changed. Oh, what a glorious day. What a glorious way that you have saved me. Oh, what a glorious day. What a glorious way. Oh, oh, oh happy day. Happy day, you wash my sin away. Oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same. Forever I can change. The next song is Everlasting God. It's 
strength for us as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We'll wait upon the Lord. Strength for us as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. You do not make you grow, grow will be. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on me like eagle. us as we wait upon the Lord. We'll wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope you are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. You do not fake you more, grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. You are the everlasting God. The everlasting God. You do not fake you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart, you're the one that drives my heart. I need you every 
Just show my hope and stay. Praise the Lord. Give it up to you, Pastor Joseph. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Uh, how do we sound? <laughs> I hope you're able to worship with us uh, online uh, via uh, the Zoom app or the YouTube channel. I believe we're being broadcast uh, live as well there. Thank you for participating. And I wish I could see your faces. Uh, but uh, your faces are in my heart as uh, we worship together this morning. Thank you for being here. I have a couple of quick announcements uh, for us this morning. Uh, we have the uh, online service uh, for the first day of the future, so a couple of uh, weeks, I guess. Uh, and uh, we will provide the service via Zoom. If you have uh, trouble accessing or if there's a friend, obviously if you're here, you don't have trouble. But if you have a friend who... Uh, needs to be uh, informed, uh, please uh, connect them. And also, uh, even if they're, they're not our church members, if uh, their church cannot worship online, you can invite them to worship with us online. So um, I'll have that in mind. And uh, you can see the uh, information on the church website uh, for how to worship via Zoom and also YouTube Live. I also, also want to remind you guys that uh, the children and youth sermons uh, the messages will be online tonight at 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. So this will be a time where your families can gather together. I know you're all together 24-7 right now uh, to worship the Lord in a family setting. So 
Pastor May and Pastor June have uploaded their uh, videos, their sermon videos, to serve your homes. So please take advantage of that from 5 p.m. tonight. Um, also, uh, we uh, are receiving offering via PayPal. Um, so if you look in your bulletin uh, or the screen right now, you can see our PayPal account. Uh, and you can give that way, or you could give in the traditional way of mailing in your checks to the church. Uh, thank you for those who have mailed in your check last week. Uh, we were able to receive it just fine. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I also want to mention that we, ha are, we have a prayer relay going on, as I've sent you an email this week. Um, we're asking people to sign up to pray, uh, to share the responsibility to lift the situation up to the Lord. So if you haven't already, uh, you can sign up um, online through the link that I sent you via the email, or brother you actually sent. Uh, so uh, please have that in mind, and uh, let's uh, remember each other, although we are all separate. Um, and especially let's pray for those uh, medical workers and the service providers that are working so hard to um, sustain our society at this time. They need a lot of your prayers. Um, one last thing I want to mention, uh, if there are people around you that need uh, financial help because of this uh, coronavirus uh, situation, this crisis, uh, unforeseen crisis, uh, the church is willing to support and help uh, in prayer and also financially as well. So if you want to recommend somebody uh, who is in uh, need right now, uh, please contact me or any of the pastors at our church so we could be good stewards uh, of our members and uh, just loving people in the church of God. So, um, yeah, yeah, please read over the bulletin, the announcements in the um, PDF file that was sent to you this week and pray for our church. I'd like to hand over the mic to Brother Daniel Cho, who is praying uh, for us this morning. Let's pray. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us another beautiful Sunday where we can worship you together. Lord, we confess that we have taken it for granted the privilege of gathering as one body of Christ at a physical church. But we're also grateful that you have allowed us to still gather together online to worship together. Lord, we know that where two or three are gathered in your name, there you will be among us. And we fully believe that you are among us here and now. So please accept our praise, hear our prayers, and be glorified through our worship. Lord, I pray for all of those who have been affected by the recent coronavirus. We know that everything is in your sovereign control. I pray for your healing hands. I pray for your grace and mercy. Lord, we pray that your spirit be present and your loving touches be felt by those who have been affected by the virus. Take away the fear, anxiety, and the feelings of isolation from people receiving treatment or under quarantine. We ask that you keep the virus from continuing to spread. We realize how weak and helpless we are in the face of a pandemic like this. Lord, you alone can bring healing and restorations the world needs. So please help us and heal our land. Lord, we also pray that you give your wisdom and strength to all government officials, healthcare professionals, and all those who are pouring efforts to contain the virus. Lord, we also pray that as families adjust to every, everyone being home, as businesses and schools close down, we ask that you guide us in our new realities. Strengthen worn out parents to speak words of kindness and encouragement to our children and help children find creative ways to experience the beauty of all you have created and, and continue with their learning. Lord, at this time, I lift up Pastor Joseph to you as he delivers your message to us today. Please fill him with your spirit so every word that comes out of his mouth will be from you, and those words will have the power to encourage us and comfort us during this time. Please also help us to give you our utmost attention and our whole hearts to you through this worship because you are the God that deserves nothing but the best from us. I pray all of these in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Daniel, for the beautiful prayer. And uh, thank you, everybody, in fact, who was uh, working behind the scenes 
to make this uh, awesome worship possible. As uh, Brother Daniel has mentioned, uh, we are saddened by the fact that we cannot gather together, but we're also so grateful to our Lord that we have this wonderful technology uh, to be able to worship the Lord together in spirit and together on the internet. So uh, praise the Lord. All glory to you, Father God. Uh, I'd like to uh, invite you to read the Word of God this morning from the book of Esther, chapter 7. If you have your Bibles, I invite you to please open your Bibles because we're going to go back and forth a little bit in this Word. Uh, and uh, if you could find the book of Esther in the Old Testament, chapter 7, verse 3 to 10, is our main text of passage that we will uh, preach from and uh, listen from. Esther chapter 7, verse 3 to 10. I will be reading from the English Standard Version, and uh, you could follow along with your, in your version, but uh, I'll re read on behalf of us. Please listen attentively with your ears. This is the Word of God. Chapter 7 of verse, verse 3 of chapter 7, Book of Esther. Then Queen Esther answered, if I have found favor in your sight, O king, and if it is please, if it pleases the king, let me let my life be granted me for my wish, and my people for my request, for we have been sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. If we had been sold merely as slaves, men and women, I would have been silent for our affliction is not to be compared with a loss to the king. Then King Ahasuerus said to Queen Esther, Who is he and where is he who has dared to do this? And Esther said, A foe and enemy, this wicked Haman. Then Haman was terrified before the king and the queen. And the king arose in his wrath from the wine drinking, and went into the palace garden, but Haman stayed to beg for his life from Queen Esther, for he saw that harm was this, uh, determined against him by the king. And the king returned to the palace garden, to the place where they were drinking wine, and Haman was falling on the couch where Esther was. And the king said, Will he even assault the queen in my presence in my own house? As the word left the mouth of the king, they covered Haman's face. Then Harbona, one of the eunuchs in attendance on the king, said, Moreover, the gallows that Haman has prepared for Mordecai, whose word saved the king, is standing at Haman's house, fifty cubits high. And the king said, Hang him on that. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai, then the wrath of the king abated. Amen. This is the word of God. Well, these days, uh, you and I are hearing very sad news. Uh, it grieves our heart to hear all the statistics of people having been confirmed of the virus affected and the number of deaths is on the rise. Uh, as of yesterday, I believe we uh, hear 25,000 people have been infected in America, and three, over 300 people have uh, experienced death, in fact, because of this. The border, uh, U.S. Uh, border is uh, sealed, and uh, nobody is coming in from Canada or Mexico. And it is all but certain but that the economic recession is going to happen. Uh, for us who are in the Bay Area, you know, uh, we, a lot of us can work from home. What a blessing it is to be able to do that. But we also remember there are others who have to go to work physically uh, in harm's, be it put themselves in harm's way. They are the doctors, the medical workers uh, who need uh, the face masks and uh, surgical gowns and, and they're all constantly putting themselves in harm's way. There are people who are running businesses who have to run restaurants for their livelihood. We also uh, know of uh, the grocery workers, grocery store workers who encounter so many people. They cannot avoid personal contact with others and also those uh, delivery people who are working so hard so that you and I could stay at home you know be safe they truly are putting their lives on the line and uh, as we think about all this comprehend what's going on uh, this grief this 
grief wells up in our hearts. You know, we listened this week that President Trump uh, has declared war on this virus. Uh, but if it really were a war, it seems like we're on the losing end. We're losing every day. Uh, the uh, number of people affect, infected are exponentially on the rise and uh, the number of people dying does not seem to abate. Um, and uh, as a result, our hearts are filled with maybe with uh, failure and with defeat. But we must remember one thing, although uh, the, the, sound, the situation sounds gloomy, seems gloomy, whether we are victorious or whether we are in defeat actually starts from here in our hearts. We must remember that it starts with our, the heart, the spiritual heart that we conceive. It determines the outcome, whether we'll be victorious or we will fail. I'm rem reminded of a pastor, uh, uh, Pastor Charles Stanley, who is a pastor in Atlanta. He wrote the book, Pathway to His Presence. And then in that book, he quotes this. Maybe you can see this on the screen, hopefully. Uh, and uh, he quotes this. He says, we may wonder why failure is happening in our lives. If we are willing to ask God what he is trying to teach us through our failures, he gladly will reveal lessons. We begin to realize that failure leads to victory. The triumphant transformation of our hearts to totally trust God with control of our lives. Uh, Pastor Stanley reminds us that the victory, true victory, is the transformation of our hearts. Uh, as we, uh, difficult situations help us and even force us to rely upon God like never before. And when we start to rely upon God, who is the fount of all victories, then victory will start in our hearts and it will be realized in our lives as well. So uh, at this time of worship, instead of focusing on how to combat this virus in the physical world, we must start with our hearts. Uh, are we already defeated in our hearts? Are we dismayed? Are we, do we have we lost hope in our hearts? How can we experience the victory that is found in God? In today's passage, we look at the spiritual vaccine, so to speak, for victory that comes from God. The question we want to ask and answer this morning is, uh, what is the great reversal win? How can we achieve the great reversal win? Win, sorry. How can we be victorious uh, in adversary? And I liken it to a baseball game. You know, uh, there are three uh, strikes out, uh, strike outs uh, in order to uh, win uh, an inning, right? And uh, uh, God being the victory pitcher, uh, he shows us his three pitches. And I like to liken it to strike one, strike two, strike three, you're out, Satan. And uh, God will be victorious and we get to experience his victory together with him. Strike one, uh, God opposes the arrogant. If you are able to download the bulletin, please, you can follow along in the bulletin, our sermon outline. If not, just listen with your ears and with your heart, that's fine. Uh, strike one, God opposes the arrogant. That is the first strikeout uh, that God has achieved. Um, going back to our story of Esther, we are reminded that uh, they are the Israelites, now called the Jews, are living in Persia. Of course, they've returned. Most of them, a lot of them have returned to Jerusalem, but there were some still uh, le uh, left behind in the, in the empire, and they cho chose to be left behind. And uh, we uh, heard this uh, tremendous, uh, tragic uh, event of Haman, who is a high official beloved by the king, has decreed a law saying, we, we, we're going to set this date to destroy and kill all Jews in our empire. And this greatly uh, distressed and, and saddened and, and terrified all the Jews that were living in Persia. And one of them was Mordecai. And so he had to rely upon the sovereignty of God and pray to him like never before. He was fasting, he was uh, in tears, he was in sackcloth. And another person that also went to God in obedience was Esther, Mordecai's uh, cousin, and she was, happened to be the queen of Persia, uh, first lady of, of the empire. 
and she realized that there was a, a mission that she was to accomplish. Although there was a, a silver lining last week, we ended with a silver lining of Mordecai and Esther seeking the presence and the blessing of God. It was not enough to, to uh, distort and, and change the path of Haman. His uh, schemes, his evil plans were still underway until God brought the first strike one against Haman. You see, uh, Haman hated Mordecai to death. Mordecai was a court official uh, who did not submit to Haman's authority. And so Haman, he devised the scheme to hang Mordecai in his backyard. So he built this gallow, uh, this tall wooden structure in order to kill his enemy. But then, right then, he was asked by the king to come in. And when he came in, the king asked a, uh, uh, a strange question to uh, Haman. He said to Haman, Haman, if there's a person that I want to honor and exalt, what do you suggest you do? What, what should I do for this guy? And Haman's heart started to beat pound like crazy. Because he thought in himself that surely this person that the king is talking about is me. Who else would the king exalt? Why he's consulting me to, uh, you know, so I could come up with my own prize, my own reward. So in the gladness and joy, joy of his heart, Haman uh, just shouted out. He, he uh, poured out what he wanted, maybe how, to, how he would be like to be honored. He said, okay, oh king, you should uh, go into the king's closet and bring some of the king's clothes and clothe this man that you honor with his clothes, with your clothes. And also, uh, you should let uh, this man ride your horse. Maybe today it would be like the presidential, uh, the limousine, you know, uh, a place of honor, a vehicle of honor. King, you should let him ride your horse. And not only that, you should let him wear your crown. And to top it all off, you should have one of your favorite officials lead the car parade and tell, announce to the people, this is a man that the king honors. Whoever is favored by the king will be honored in this way. And that person should be the, the pager, the announcer. He should be the one leading this, this parade. The next word that came out of uh, king, the king, uh, Artaxerxes, it uh, was unbelievable in the, in the years of Haman. All that you said, Haman, do it to Mordecai. What? Mordecai? Haman was uh, distraught. What had happened was, uh, you know, uh, the king explained that uh, overnight I happened to be awake at night. And I happened to ask the uh, you know, officials to read me the chronicles of the king, the journal, royal journals. What happened? And in the journal, I read of this man called Mordecai who uh, discovered this, this scheme, assassination scheme of two of the king's eunuchs. And this man, Mordecai, saved the king from imminent assassination. And I asked the officials, was he ever uh, rewarded? And they said, no. That's why, Heman, I'm asking you to reward this guy, Mordecai, and honor him. Just like you said, everything you just said, every word, every detail, you should do it for Mordecai. You can imagine Haman's uh, heart. He uh, probably felt like a cow going to the slaughterhouse and uh, he dragged his feet but he had to obey the king and he announced and he honored Mordecai and he served Mordecai and you can imagine on his way back home Haman his head hung low and in, in humiliation maybe the most humiliating day of his life he had to wrap his head around with his uh, hands and he went home trembling with with rage and disgrace and with deep sadness. You know, this is a very strange story, isn't it? The king just happened to be up that night. The king just happened to read the journals of the kings. The king just happened to notice the brave act of Mordecai. And the, the king just happened to find out payment outside the king's chamber. Was it all just happenstance? Was all this just by chance? You know, as people of God, we know that there's nothing uh, by chance for God. The opposite of chance uh, for us holy people is called God's sovereignty. 
as we mentioned last week. God's sovereignty means that everything is under God's control. There's nothing that slips by God, slips by without his, without his knowing. As we believe in the sovereignty of God, there is no happenstance. There is no by chance. And one of the principles of the Word of God throughout the Bible that teaches us about, about a, a, a law of God is that God opposes the arrogant. All this story was, was uh, being played out to fulfill God's, God's uh, you know, law that God opposes the arrogant. I'd like to direct your attention to this Bible verse in James chapter 4, verse 6. James chapter 4, verse 6. Uh, maybe it's on the screen, maybe not. Uh, but I'll read it for us. It goes like this. But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Um, in this book, C.S. Lewis' book, uh, Mere Christianity, he talks about the sin of arrogance, of pride. And he makes this uh, amazing observation that the world will agree with most of the moral ethical sins uh, in this world, you know, that the Bible talks about. But one sin that the world does not recognize as sin is the sin of arrogance. The world does not see the sin of arrogance, of self-pride as sin. In fact, the world sometimes promotes it. But you have to, you know, promote yourself. You have to talk about all your merits. You have to be boastful a little bit. You have to be, you know, really showing yourself, uh, you know, to make a name for yourself. The world does not realize that pride is a sin. Therefore, pride, says Lewis says, is the most dangerous of all sins. Only the people of God who revere and honor and fear God recognize the sin of arrogance. Because those who are arrogant are, are, are those who are fighting against God. For our ultimate victory in life, in any circumstance, God has to strike down the arrogance of our lives, in our lives. In some regard, some respects, maybe the coronavirus situation of today is God's way of making, uh, uh, throwing that ball and us making that strike one. You know, God strike one for us. Uh, I hear in the news uh, today that in China, you know, uh, ever since like January to March right now, the sky has been clearing up. Because all the factories are shut down, and for so long, since the song, so long time, uh, the sky has never been bluer, never been cleaner in China. We can see the satellite images uh, that uh, in the news. We also hear of uh, Italy. You know how Italy is under lockdown and being being quarantined, and uh, many people flock to Florence, uh, the canals for a boat ride, uh, the condolas. But they say because everything is shut down, the canals, the water is becoming clear, and you can see the bottom, and even fish start to emerge in this uh, city, in this uh, crowded city. And we, we get to realize uh, freshly that we human beings have been so infatuated with greed of money and greed of things, and we keep producing more money, more things. And we realize that we have been doing business. The whole humanity has been doing business without the presence of God, forgetting that God is in control. What seemed like a chance, a happenstance, this virus was actually commanded by God. And once he commanded the, the virus to flourish in this land, all of us are, are locked down in our houses. And we realized our medicine cannot cure this. Our science cannot solve this. We are all humanity as one community. Uh, we, are under, we are under the opposition of God uh, to our arrogance of our life that has been lived as if God was absent. As I uh, you know, stayed at my home, was uh, self-isolated with my family, I also looked back on my life and realized that uh, I had committed a sin of a living as if God was not there. Uh, and uh, I realized that without God's grace, I cannot accomplish any of my plans. I cannot even go out without God's grace. It helped me realize that, that uh, I was arrogant, that I was 
a living so apart from God that uh, I, I lived as if in, in many areas that, uh, you know, I lived as if he, uh, we didn't, I didn't need him. The first, uh, the remedy for victory for is to strike down, to, oppo to, to oppose God's opposal of arrogance, pride in our life. But uh, there was something more needed in order to strike down this, uh, this difficult situation for Esther and Mordecai. And this leads us to God's strike two. What's God's strike two? It's this, God exalts the obedient. Not only God opposes the pride, strike one, he stroked down Haman, but uh, he exalts the one who obeys his will, who conforms to the will of God. We go back to the story of Esther. Esther, she sacrificed her life. She committed her life in order to go to the king and make her plea. And uh, that was an act of obedience. How was she able to obey God? How was she able to uh, fulfill her assignment in life? Well, the story is that Esther invited the king and Haman. You know, when Haman discovered that he and the king were the only two guests, honored guests, VIPs of Esther's banquet, he, he was satisfied, more than satisfied. He was uh, just exalted. He was, uh, uh, he was so excited. He was glorified. He was honored. And uh, he boasted to the others, you know, maybe some of the, you know, uh, hurt, uh, uh, the uh, humiliation before was being restored. And uh, Esther, uh, she, they ha she held a banquet for them three days. And uh, the king, who was so delighted, so happy after all the drinks and the merriment, he asked her, Esther, what do you want? Even the half of the kingdom I will give to you. And Esther although she had a very soft and a gentle face or expression, but now she was serious. She was sincere. And she made one request to the king. He said, looking straight in his eye, Esther said, save me, save my people. You know, the king just suddenly woke up from his, uh, from his drunkenness. He became sober all of a sudden. And Esther continued on the story in verse four saying that I and my people are to be destroyed, to be killed, to be annihilated. We will be slaughtered. And uh, when the, the husband, the king, heard this, his heart was devastated. Who would, uh, what husband would not be devastated when a wife says, save me, husband. Somebody's about to murder me, kill me. You know, the king was devastated, and uh, his heart filled up with wrath. And the one question that King had direct for her was this, who dare threaten you? Who is it? And as if uh, the King's wrath was directed to a lightning rod, and now the Esther is pointing that lightning rod to somebody, she is pointing it to Haman. It is this evil Haman that is plotted against me and my people. At that moment, the King's rage was about to fall upon Haman, and Haman, uh, he was so distressed and, and so scared, so afraid that he knelt down and he fell down on the couch of Esther. The king said, now you're about to rape, assault my queen, my wife in front of me. And as, as soon as his words came out of his mouth, the officials came and, and wrapped around, wrapped the face of Haman and took him out. And he was hung upon the gallows that he, had, he himself had constructed in his backyard. Strike two, God has struck another blow upon his enemy. We read from the story that God brings victory to those who obey him and depend upon him. Last week we saw that Esther's confession, she said, if I perish, I perish. She was committed to doing God's work regardless of uh, sacrifice of her life. And we remember that after three days of fasting and praying, she dared go to the king without being called. Esther, she, she obeyed God, uh, daring even her life. And when she obeyed God's will for her, God saved her from the immediate threat of Haman. Uh, I'm reminded of this verse in James chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 10. 
I'll read it for us. It goes like this. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. One more time. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. You see that verse on the screen? Esther, Queen Esther believed that God would save her people from the threat. And uh, it, with, with that belief, she was able to commit herself to the will of God. What does the word humble mean? It means that you submit to something. You submit to God, that you are under his command and you obey whatever he says because you are under his sovereign will. It is a voluntary act of lowering yourself, of conforming yourself to the will of God. And those who humble themselves for the Lord, he will exalt you. Amen. Uh, last week in my message, I suggested that uh, our, our mission right now, our duty, our responsibility for a time like this is to pray for the people of God, to pray for the world that is so uh, in despair, so broken right now. Uh, and uh, we Christians have been called for a time like this to seek out God's blessing upon this earth in the name of Jesus Christ. So uh, last week I sent out an email asking people to sign up to pray, a prayer relay. And uh, I was just so surprised and blessed to see many of you actually sign up for this uh, prayer relay. And the uh, list is almost filled up. I encourage you to, uh, if you haven't already, write your name and commit like even a one meal time, you know, a one hour or 30 minutes even to pray to God for God's blessing upon this land. And when we submit ourselves to God's will, God's duty for us, which is to pray for the people, God's duty, Jesus' command to us, which was to love one another as he has loved us at a time like this, we will be exalted by God. That is the way we win. That is the second principle, how we win. God brings victory and exaltation for those who obey God's will. And you and I are in that will of God in a time like this. As a result, I see our church. You know, we should be scared. We should be frightened. We should be confused. But I see people praying for one another all the more. I see people being connected all the more and seeking, uh, how are you? Are you doing okay? You know, and uh, it is so good to see Christians even coming closer, even more closer than ever before because of this crisis. Satan has schemed so that we cannot need to have worship. Satan has schemed to destroy and divide us, divide and destroy us. But uh, Satan has already failed. Amen. Those who obey God's command are in submission to his will, have already achieved victory through Jesus Christ. Amen. This is strike two. And there is a final last strike three. Strike three is this. God gives the ultimate grand victory. We find this in chapter nine and verse one and two. If you have your Bibles open still, I'd like to invite you to read chapter nine, verse one and two. It says, now in the 12th month, which is the month of Adar, on the 13th day of the same, when the king's command and edict were about to be carried out, on the very day when the enemies of the Jews hoped to gain the mastery over them, the reverse occurred. The Jews gained mastery over those who hated them. The Jews gathered in their cities throughout all the provinces of King Ahasuerus or Artaxerxes to lay hands on those who sought their harm and no one could stand against them for the fear of them had fallen on all people. Strike three. Uh, due to the, with the request of uh, Mordecai, who was now exalted, he asked the king this request. O king, grant us a day, the Jews, a day where, when we can defend ourselves. And the king indeed uh, get, granted this request. And all the Jews all over Persia were able to arm themselves, defend themselves, and even defeat the enemies of the people of God. And God brought this amazing salvation upon the people of God. Because you see, this strike three was not just a, a, a victory for the people of God. It was a victory for all of us. We recall that God brings our Savior, our Savior, my Savior, Jesus Christ, through this Jewish people. 
And God had preserved the people of Israel, the Jews, so that Messiah could come. And Messiah could, uh, in turn, he will do his work of salvation for you and, you and I. And Satan, who had schemed to destroy all humanity, has experienced three strikes out. And uh, people of God is preserved and the, the salvation of God is secure. Yes, amen. God's sovereign will will be done all the time. Uh, but uh, there, is, there are conditions of, chapter, uh, of strike one and strike two. The strike one was we need to remove ourselves, our heart, of the arrogant sins in our lives. Strike two is that we need to be in confirmation and, and agreement and submit ourselves to the work of God in our lives which I said was prayer and to love one another. The ultimate victor on this land was not Esther, was not Mordecai, but was Jesus Christ. Because when he came to this earth, the, uh, the world was hostile to him. Nobody received him. But Jesus was persecuted unto death on the cross. And on the third day, he resurrected, proving himself to be the son of God and he conquered death for us, giving us the ultimate victory over our arch enemy death. And so we want to recall what, how Paul, the Apostle Paul, describes what Jesus did for us. How he achieved this ultimate victory in our hearts, in our lives, in, in our eternity. We're reminded of Philippians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. And uh, I'll read it for us uh, in remembrance of God's word. It says, And being found in human form, he, Jesus, humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. Amen and amen. He says, oh, again, going to verse 8, He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death. And as a result, God exalted him to have the highest name of, of, of all names, Lord of Lords and King of Kings, our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, remember that he was in the Garden of Gethsemane before the night he was captured, uh, before the day he was captured on the night of, uh, uh, actually the eve of uh, his uh, crucifixion. And he prayed to God, God, I want your will, not mine. So he had to lay, lay aside his his agenda, although Jesus was never arrogant. This is like for us uh, laying down our arrogant sins. And he's asking for his life to be conformed to the will of God. God, I submit to you. And when he obeyed to the extent of the cross, Jesus, God raised him from the dead. And he gave Jesus the name of all names. And he achieved the great reversal from Satan. The great victory has been one because of Jesus because of Jesus how can we survive this virus how can we be, be victorious even in this difficult situation I present to you the word of God that God uh, uh, dis despises the one who is arrogant and and honors exalts those who are humble I pray that you would use this time to repent of your sin of arrogance of pride the sin of living as if God was not there and let's also obey God by praying for the saints, praying for our nation and community, and also praying for God's will to be done as we uh, look after the brothers and sisters and love them as a church should. So brothers and sisters, let us repent and obey. Uh, although uh, we feel frustrated and want to get out from our isolation, the only way to defeat this virus is to stay at home, right? That's what the uh, authorities say. We have to listen to the government authorities, officials. Likewise, how can we defeat this spiritual virus of sin, of, of uh, despair, of, of death? We have to listen to our authority, Jesus Christ. And he says, do your duty as a Christian. Pray for this nation. Pray for repentance of your sins. As we conform to God's will, the word of God says he will exalt us. And I pray that every one of you, every one of us, will come as, out as exalted victors as a result 
of this weakness. Although we are weak, we are strong because we have Jesus who has conquered over sin and death. Amen? So as we look forward to the day that God brings that strike three, you're out, that victory to us, let us continue to obey the word of God, continue to do our part as people of God as we pray and as we continue to love all the more as we see his day, ultimate victory, the day approaching. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. I'll pray for us. Gracious Father, we thank you for this reminder from the book of Esther, how you brought out victory in tremendous adversaries. Oh, Father God, have mercy upon us as the adversary is upon us and our communities and our countries and our world. Father God, although adversaries are there, you are greater than all these things. That is our faith in you. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would govern, you would reign over this virus. And most of all, reign over our hearts so that we will be able to repent of our sins of arrogance, that we will be able to pray for the people of God, for this world, and continue to uh, love and to take, look after, care for those people that you have given us to love. We love you because we know that you are the victor. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's uh, sing a last song, Brother James. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. For sin runs deep, your grace is more. Where grace is found is where you are. And where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need to meet you. My one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. My one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Amen. Let us all pray one last time. Father God, we thank you for you being our good, good father all the time. And we trust you even in this time of adversary of uh, the virus and all the fear and all the uncertainties in life. We know that we have a father, God, 
who always will bring out his ways in this earth. So Father, uh, in obedience and in love, we give ourselves to you as your instruments of peace. We also give our offering to you at this time uh, so that you would use this uh, as two loaves of uh, two fish and five loaves of bread uh, and uh, seven loaves of bread and two fish to expand your kingdom and uh, to share this wonderful gospel message to people who need it the most and also to provide for those who are economically under hardship, Father God. Father, bless the chopper giver and uh, protect us from harm's way this week. Uh, keep us safe under the wing, under your wings, with your guardian angels all around us. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us uh, on, online, uh, worshiping together. I hope to see your faces face to face and then worship together soon. Uh, sorry, there's no snacks today. Uh, just uh, <laughs> eat your own snacks. We'll meet next time. Have a great, blessed week in the Lord. Bye. Amen. Thank you.